Hello, Star of Vision. I'm Thomas Bigali, Ventures Associate at Plugin Patek Center. Hello, Thomas. Thank you for being with us uh, on Startup Vision TV. So Plug and Play is one of the most active platform and VC funds uh, with uh, 40 locations around the world, hundreds of startups. So what is the vision of Plug and Play as a global player? So as you just mentioned, I mean, we, are, we have built the largest open innovation platform in the world, where we are supporting roughly 500 corporate partners. Um, to solve their business challenges through a startup acceleration. And on the other side, we are one of the most uh, active early stage investors in the world uh, with few success stories such as uh, N26, Oni, Google, PayPal, and so forth. Um, our mission is simple, is to uh, empower and invest in startups, but also support our corporate partners to become more innovative and uh, competitive. It's really impressive, I mean, uh, when you see uh, uh, your portfolio. So can, can you explain, can we go a little bit deeper into that and can you explain the concept of open innovation? What kind of synergy do you create between corporates and startups? Yeah, I mean, for us, open innovation means that uh, companies do not rely only on their internal knowledge, but also um, they are innovating uh, thanks to, by leveraging other players. So at Plug and Play, we basically uh, source, connect, and then facilitate the collaborations between our clients, so corporate partners, and startups. But we also actually have a panel of innovation services, and um, we can even connect large corporate partners with their peers, so other corporate partners to work on, on synergies and common projects, but also even the government or universities um, to do this. But um, when it comes to, to investment, so there is not really a correlation between uh, our investment activities and our uh, startups acceleration. So we do not actually invest in all the startups that we accelerate. When we accelerate a startup, it's totally free of charge and equity, while we will not necessarily invest in it, simply because when we accelerate the startups, it means that they are solving the pain points of one of our corporate partners and we sign a POC, while these startups that we're accelerating are not necessarily the one that will bring us the, let's say, the, the bigger return investment. We have uh, invested in a lot of B2C startups, which are usually not the startups we are, we are accelerating. I mean, I can give you an example on that front uh, of startups we actually accelerated and then invest, but this represents only five or 10% of the startups uh, we accelerate, but for example, a uh, few of our corporate partners were in, in the mobility space, were looking for damage uh, checks solutions. So you know how to screen a car. This is really useful for uh, uh, cars automakers or um, a car rental or leasing companies, you know? And uh, the, 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 all the solutions that we found back in the days were, you know, large hardware solutions, big portals and so on. And uh, out of nowhere, out from an uh, entrepreneur first, the startups were actually able to do the same with the same accuracy, but only using a software solution. So this was quite impressive. We, uh, in, with only, I, I don't know, remember, but maybe five months of existence, they were already signing a lot of POCs with our corporate partners, and then they were raising funds. And of course, we, we, we uh, did invest, but this is an exception. So now you're based in Paris, which is one of plug and play hubs for the concept of smart cities. Uh, what will a smart city look like? <laughs> Interesting concept. I mean, smart cities for us refer to how smart technology can be used to find innovative solutions to some of the most pressing urban uh, and social challenges of tomorrow. But um, I mean, we came up with the idea of smart cities because we saw a lot of synergies between our corporate partners in different industries, uh, such as the mobility, the, the real estate and construction, the energy and sustainability, the IoT. And uh, we, we saw that they were actually working on similar projects. And we decided to then uh, create a program where we could merge these uh, industries all together and find some common grounds. And so we started back in, um, roughly two years ago in Paris, and now we expanded to uh, 
the rest of Europe. We are even in Asia, in, in the US right now, and we, we will be soon actually in, uh, in, uh, in Africa as well. That's very interesting because, you know, it's something, it's a concept everybody talks about. We hear, you know, it's like science fiction, but we don't really know what it means, you know, and uh, uh, we hope it will uh, help uh, uh, everybody live better in, in big cities. So uh, if we go into sustainability, you know, which is very important to carbon neutrality, energy efficiency, um, all this is crucial to our future. So when we'll be able uh, to um, implement that on a large scale? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've seen a main increase and uh, also a lot of awareness of uh, such, uh, such topics since the past few years. I think the implementation at a large scale is of course slowed down by the regulations, you know, but also the existing infrastructure. So when it comes to smart cities, green cities, uh, sustainability and so forth, it's of course easier for uh, c uh, new cities or, or you know, new districts to implement such uh, new technologies. Uh, when you have really historical, old uh, and uh, huge cities such as New York, Paris, London, uh, it's actually harder for them to uh, implement this at a large scale at the really fast pace. Simply because besides the regulation, you also have the existing infrastructures uh, that can slow down a lot of this and makes the, the, these new technologies even harder to, and more expensive to, uh, to implement. But yeah. uh, a good example for this could be maybe, uh, we are working on a project right now uh, close to Marrakesh and uh, in a city called uh, Ben Gerir, where the, the government and the king uh, of Morocco invested a lot and they, um, they are building a huge new um, smart and green district there. So they, 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 they even uh, so they, they have uh, uh, worked on a huge project uh, to renovate the Mohammed VI um, University. They, they, they came up with a huge innovation center, the equivalent of Station F and so forth. But for them, you know, as they are building from scratch, it's of course easier uh, than than uh, Paris or New York to, to do the same uh, using the existing infrastructure, definitely. Yes, in fact, yeah, we talk about renovation at that point, if we want to go uh, and renovate, I mean, uh, make them greener, but let's hope for the best. And, you know, at a time when we are more and more uh, health conscious and knowing also that some of the construction material are, um, you know, dangerous for our health, uh, will we have different uh, solutions too on this uh, part? I mean, this is a huge topic too, and even more since the beginning of the pandemic, as you can imagine. So a lot of uh, large corporations and some of our corporate partners are looking for such solutions, uh, but not only in the infrastructure space, even in the mobility or the travel and hospitality, you know, like big airlines or, or train manufacturers, uh, or larger infrastructures such as uh, uh, um, train stations and so forth, hotels, of course, because, you know, with the spread of, uh, of this uh, COVID-19 uh, um, uh, virus, at the end, we realized that the, 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 um, the world is quite dirty. And uh, why not trying to find some innovative materials that could actually prevent the spread of such viruses? So we've seen some innovations of, uh, such as the air purifiers or self-cleaning materials or even antimicrobial uh, coatings or additives. Uh, some solutions were ready to use and some others not, but definitely the world in the future will be actually uh, cleaner and uh, more hygienic in a way. But do, do you think it's coming really soon? I mean, it's uh, in the process right now? It's definitely a huge topic. I mean, as I mentioned before, the industries uh, such as mobility, travel and hospitality, real estate and so forth, are actively looking for such solutions. So during the pandemic, they were, of course, um, trying to find some ready-to-use solutions, so something they could implement really quickly. Um, so th they were mainly, you know, uh, some additives or, or even some sprays. But on the long run, we, we, we see that they are also looking for more radical innovation, such as uh, innovative coat, uh, coating, you know. So uh, let's assume that in the future, the door handle or even the uh, material of your smartphone or, or, or even your laptop will be antimicrobial. And this, 
this should happen pretty soon. This is a very positive message. Thank you, Toba, for this one. And thank you also for being with us. It was very nice talking to you. Thanks a lot for your time.